Ah, GHC, the time to get the bag, both literally and figuratively. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Switching gears from some of the Duolingo videos that I've been doing recently, I wanted to create a guide on the Grace Hopper celebration. So let's go ahead and get started with the basics. What is the Grace Hopper celebration? The Grace Hopper celebration was founded by the Anita B organization as a way to celebrate Admiral Grace Hopper and bring together women in technology. The Grace Hopper Celebration, or GHC, is an event like no other. They bring in awesome keynote speakers, there's a large career fair that goes on, awesome after parties, and lots of swag. In addition, they do a lot of demos and workshops, they have mentorship circles, and a lot of networking opportunities. Before we dive in on how you can best prepare for the conference, and make the most of the experience. I just want to share a little bit about my background and share some funny stories about my experience. So I first found out about GHC when I was a sophomore in college. At first, I didn't really understand or know about the full extent of how massive this uh, event is. It's pretty wild when you actually are there in person seeing about 50,000 people all in one spot. The craziest part to me was how big and uh, well thought out each booth was to the career fair. I didn't expect it to be such a thing to kind of marvel and experience. At each of their booths, they try to have some of the cool swag and other demos to try to recruit the top talent. My first year, I just went with the expectation of going and learning through a lot of these workshops and getting to network. And by the end of it, I not only got a lot of swag, I also got an internship. It's pretty amazing that during this experience, I was not only able to just get internships, but also a full-time job uh, during my senior year. I think truly the craziest part about the experience are the after parties. The after parties are probably the most shocking part of the experience. Um, I got to go to so many different happy hours and dinners. I got to go to the opening night of one of the rides at Disney World. That's nuts. And in general, it's such a fun way to get to meet uh, new people in tech. So before the conference, there are a few things that I recommend everyone do before they go into their first time at GHC because it can be pretty overwhelming. Pretty, pretty, pretty. In just the three days that you're there, there's so many different options that you can do. So sometimes it can be challenging to decide what to prioritize. In general, about a month or two, the Nita B organization provides a schedule and they also typically had a phone app for you to kind of schedule and coordinate and register for events that you're interested. These tend to fill up pretty fast, so I recommend uh, checking those often so that you're making sure you have the most options for the workshops and talks that you want to attend. There are also some talks that are not registration required, so you can always attend those. Many of these talks are also divided by the general topic that you're interested in. So if you're interested in machine learning, take a look at that topic first and then weed down the speakers that you want to watch in person. For many people, a big part of the GHC experience is that career fair component. It's important that you put your resume into the Grace Hopper uh, resume database as soon as you can. So I recommend go ahead and prepare that resume, get it polished and look through, and have a digital copy available. Once you have a digital copy, submit it into the database, and then other recruiters and companies can contact you um, a few months before the celebration actually happens. By doing so, these recruiters might do um, some pre-phone screenings ahead of time, and that way you can do some of your interviews even at the Grace Hopper celebration. But don't worry, even if you aren't contacted beforehand, um, it's important that you have that digital copy of the resume so that way you have that link handy and when you go to the booths in person, you can easily submit it to uh, the recruiter or um, employee representative for them to review just on the spot. It's pretty amazing the connections that you can make at this conference. Even just a few five minute elevator pitch can actually make the difference between you getting an opportunity to interview or not. So another tip is to recommend doing a lot of your career and interview preparation ahead of time so that way you're prepared um, just in case you might get an interview on the spot. Many of my friends uh, walked into the celebration and didn't have any interviews lined up with any of those pre-phone screenings. They walked in, went to the um, exhibition, and 
they were able to walk out with a job the same day. It's pretty crazy um, that the turnaround is so fast, but um, be prepared if you're interested in looking for an internship or job. And another pro tip is ahead of time, you'll have that full list of companies that are available. So make sure you do your research and make sure you understand what those companies do. It looks so bad if you go to one of the smaller companies and you don't even know what they're doing. Just having that ground basis will already spark a conversation and you'll look um, much more qualified as a candidate if you already know what the um, product area that they're trying to work on is. Okay, this is another kind of silly tip on things that you need to know ahead of time. Um, first off, I think um, one of those questions that you might get is like, what, what do you wear at the Grace Hopper celebration? I've seen um, the outfits range from um, very casual, I'm talking like jeans and t-shirt, to um, business professional, to even suits. Um, so I think it's up to you and what kind of companies that you might be interested in interviewing for or um, what kind of networking opportunities you're hoping to get. Um, for me, I chose somewhere in that business casual realm, um, just something that I could be very comfortable in. And I, I personally wore sneakers because you do a lot of walking throughout the day. Um, whether it's just within the realm of the, the conference convention center or um, outside when you do some of those after parties. So make sure you're dressed comfortably. Um, also recommend layering if you can. And then here's one of the other really silly things. This is gonna sound so strange, but try to make room in your suitcase on your way there. The reason being is you get so much swag. By the end of it, you'll, you'll, you will you'll don't know what to do with all the swag. You'll just be handing out swag to other people and being your own little booth. I've definitely had friends who are disappointed in themselves because they packed too full and didn't have any room for some of the swag to bring back. Okay, so now actually moving into the first day of the GHC celebration. How do you make the most of your experience there? What I recommend is definitely taking a lot of breaks and um, giving yourself space. It is a very jam-packed day in general, starting from when you wake up to getting ready for the day, just like, you know, looking presentable, I guess. This is a part of the convention I wasn't a fan of. Um, at the uh, career fair exposition, some people would try to get there as early as possible to line up to be the first person in the door to make that first impression once those um, career fair doors open up. Um, so that can be kind of a mad dash to be able to be front of the line to get that spot. Um, I wouldn't stress about that, um, but it is important to know that if you're interested in interviewing that it goes on a rolling basis often for these companies. So sometimes spots do fill um, just by the nature of having to schedule things the day of or um, that uh, three days of the conference. If your priority isn't related to interviewing, then I would recommend trying to attend as many of the talks that you are most interested in, taking the time to get to meet the folks around you and just get to understand the other amazing work that other women in technology are doing. If your goal is to have fun, um, what I do recommend doing as well is still networking while you're at the career fair because that is an opportunity to get some of those um, passes for um, these after party events and these invitations. I think it is also helpful on the day of to have um, some sort of notepad or also your laptop. You might be asked to do some coding interviews on the spot, so be prepared for that. Um, and then if you are going to some of the workshops, it's also helpful because some of them might be live coding demos as well. When you're at the conference, also look out for your other friends that are there. Make sure you guys are taking care of each other and make sure you're also um, drinking water and eating. It's really easy to forget that sometimes when you're at an event at this massive scale. So my last piece of advice is to take a deep breath, enjoy it, take it in, have lots of fun. And even if you are doing the remote opportunity, it's still a wonderful way to meet so many folks um, that you wouldn't have otherwise. And if you aren't able to get a ticket to attend, I still highly recommend you put your resume in that GHC database because that still allows an avenue for companies to contact you, regardless if you attend in person or not. Let me know if you have any other questions about the Grace Hopper Celebration Conference. I'm so excited to hear that it's going to be partially in person again. Honestly, the Grace Hopper celebration has really changed my life. I really hope those of you watching this video get the opportunity to attend. Thank you so much for watching and hope you all have a fun time at Grace Hopper 2022. Please subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful. Thanks again and see you on the next video.